Hey, welcome back, 7 Days to Die Mining fans. This is Zith, and I'm going to quickly cover the changes uh, to the character creation system for A20. The, um, if you've never made characters before, this is not the place to start. Go back and watch the videos that were made um, previously for A18, A19. They cover the material that you need. Um, this is just the differences for A20. Um, I've included a, a template character, Nurse Nancy template. Um, it's going to um, basically have everything that uh, A20 modders will need to do characters. Uh, let's take a quick look at her. A couple things have changed. First of all, we found this out in A19, is that the main mesh should be named LOD0 uh, for purposes of the mesh-based particles. Um, the TFP has standardized on that. So if um, you have to rewrite the buffs for the um, like fire particle if you don't rename it. So go ahead and rename your main mesh to LOD0. Um, you don't have to, any other meshes that you have, hair meshes, eye meshes, you don't rename, just the main one. And then the FBX file that had the, the that had this mesh in it, uh, probably the one when you did the export process, came up with the export to FBX. Um, that one needs to be set to read-write. The mesh has to be read-write. There's a little checkbox on the FBX to enable that. And then the fire particles should look good on the meshes. The other change is that um, TFP has added a new empty child object called icon tag, capital I, C O N, capital T A G, icon tag. The uh, transform for that that particle is um, at the top of the head of each character. You see here it's like 1.9 um, above the top. That's used for the new Twitch um, uh, feature where you place like things hovering above the characters' heads. Um, I haven't watched that many streams, but uh, this is how that is enabled. So if you want to have that feature on your characters, make sure you have that new child object. Um, that's basically it for the new child objects. Um, the ch other change in the process I recommend is that um, when we created characters A19, I had you create a gun joint, a right weapon, and a left weapon. Um, they're really probably, um, it's a waste of time to create those um, during the character creation process. Save it to the end of the process. Uh, and I'll show you, we're going to add those by cutting and pasting. So let's do that now. Um, for purposes of this exercise, I've, uh, I'm going to use a character. I'm going to take this off. That I, uh, there's a website called Ready Player Me that lets you make characters based on a picture of your uh, face. Um, this is what that application thinks I look like. Um, I'm a lot older than that, but at least we got gray uh, hair going on. So that's the character. Um, expanding him, um, you notice that he has left over a right weapon, a gun joint, and a left weapon. So we're going to go ahead and delete those out for now. So I'm going to click on it, right click, and I'm going to click delete. It'll pop up a message saying, hey, you can't do that unless you open the prefab first. Click open prefab. And you see it's all black here. Um, black means not committed. Blue means committed. Uh, so I'm going to find the right weapon. I'm going to right click and click delete, get rid of that. Or you can highlight the gun joint, press the delete key and get rid of that. And then I'm going to go to find the left hand and then down to left weapon and delete that, all that. And you come up to the little bar here on the side and back and it will say, do you want to save it? I saved that. And now they're all blue. It's all committed. So now let's go add them back in uh, from the tutorial uh, character here. So there's the Nurse Nancy template uh, that will be included in the tutorial project. Uh, we're going to find right weapon. And uh, I'm going to do both at the same time, right weapon and gun joint. I'm going to right click and go copy. Now these are children of the right hand. So I come down to my um, new character I'm making. And I find the right hand. And then I right click and paste as child. And you see it puts both of those right here. They're black because they're not committed. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the left weapon. Find the left hand. There's the left weapon. Right click, copy. And then come down to find the left hand. Right click, paste as child. And it will put that there as well. Now I want to commit those changes. Go up to the main, um, I'm going to get this out of the way, to the main character come over to the overrides and you can see it's kind of off the screen a little but there's an apply all button and I apply all and then you notice that now um, this character has this done. So let's go ahead and, and check out um, the new uh, weapon uh, inclusion system where in XML it's going to spawn weapons into the hand of your characters based on what you said in XML but you got to get it aligned right. So how do we do that because every character is different. The nurse if I turn the nurse on here, you notice 
she's different. The hand pacing isn't exactly the same. So we've got to make some adjustments for these two characters. Taller, wider, hands are longer, and so on. So how do we do that? Well, there's several different ways to do it. Um, probably the most expedient way to do it is we'll start with gun joint. You notice um, I have already added in a new child object for every um, for almost all the weapons in the game. Uh, rifles go under the gun joint, uh, melee weapons and pistols go under the, into the right weapon, and bows and two-handed weapons generally go under the left um, weapon. But let's just start with uh, one here. What we want to do is, even though I have placed in this gun joint with some parameters that we developed in A19 that are very, very close, um, it might be easier to um, do an adjustment on this gun joint globally first. And let's go ahead and see how that works. So I'm going to start with the AK-47. And you notice that the entire prefab for the AK-47, this is the player weapon ripped out of A20, included. And it is added, anytime you add a new weapon, the weapon's transform should be all zeroed out. Just like, you know, we always tell you with the parent object. Zero that out, and it's hung under a child. Now, there's some values already in here um, that are perfect for the nurse, but ideally not perfect for this guy. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. What I want to do is make a global adjustment to the gun joint based on this character, and it should inherit to all the other weapons and make them even closer than they would be otherwise. I'm going to show you real quick what I mean by it's not close. So there's the AK-47. Looks kind of good. Um, what we do is highlight the, that parent object of the gun. The gun never change that. It's got to stay at zero. A parent of that, that will populate the animation field. We want to find the AK-47 hold animation, which is right here. We don't want to use the fire animation because the first frame of that has a kick and the nose is going to go up, and we don't want a baseline off of that. So use the hold. Every gun will have a hold animation. Hit play and then unplay, and it will show you basically where it is. You see it's off. The, this character, the hand in the animation is positioned higher based on whether it has a forearm rotation join or not. Some do, some don't. So the animation does its best at mapping to the character and you can see it's off. So what I want to do now is you can actually go through and adjust this joint on every individual one and position it exactly. Well, you could try to do it globally. Now, I haven't done this before, but I think it might work, so here we go. Um, while it's in this position, I'm going to not adjust this joint here, okay? Let me do that again. I'm going to go back, get the AK hold, and play it. I'm going to move up to the gun joint, and I'm going to actually adjust this parent here. You notice it's now blued here. There'll be changes on this, and, and uh, you can remember this is minus 90, minus, and we'll see, show you how this is going to change. So now let's go ahead and position this gun better. All right, um, you want to be on the pivot generally, uh, though you can interchangeable these, but I find it's easy to keep it on pivot, and then change the global and local depending on the directions of the arrows um, that you want. You notice that it's going to be a little bit of change based on whether it's oriented on the character or the world. So here, first thing we need to do is, I know uh, I'm going to need to rotate this thing, get it somewhat level, all right? And then I notice it's going to have to rotate a bit that way, and then a bit that way. That's kind of right. Uh, so go to the change the tool, and you can move it up. Ideally, you want this thing to be right in between the four fingers and the thumb, and you want the index figure on the trigger. So we're going to come up a little bit and go forward, get that index figure around the trigger. That's not too bad. It's got to come back into the hand. And that's lining up nicely. You can check what it looks like underneath here. Um, I don't know how OCD you all are about the back side of it, but that's probably a little better. Yep, and the front of the gun looks pretty darn good. All right, now don't worry about when you're looking at this, say, oh man, the gun is, it should be like going this way. It doesn't matter. This is, we're using the player animations and the player weapons, so we got to live with what TFP gives us. Um, the actual ray cast is going to come from the origin out this way to the target. So the, you know, the, you'll see a muzzle flash here, but the bullet's actually going to go that the ray cast is going to go that way. Guns don't shoot actual bullets, they shoot rays. Um, so that looks pretty good. Now, here's the trick part. Got to make sure before you go anywhere, you got to copy this these values. So you want to right click and copy component. All right? Because once you stop all this, 
All right, you notice they went back. You've lost all your work. So then come back here and click on it and paste component values. And you see it adjusted the gun. So now we go back to this AK-47 like we did before and we hit the play. We're back to where we started. It's still perfectly lined up. All right, now that's, that's um, gun number one. So we stop this thing right here and we're gonna turn this gun off and let's go grab another gun. Uh, let's try the shotgun. Now, the auto shotgun. And I turn that thing on and we gotta find the animation for it. So we go to the parent and we go to the animation down here and we find the hold for the auto shotgun hold. There it is, play it. And now you see the other one, remember it was pointed way down. We got this a lot closer, all right? In fact, it may be good enough to just, if you're not OCD, you know, so you got a little thing going on here with the fingers. But if you make any of these adjustments, don't screw with the gun joint now. You're going to want to make it on this one. So, so you're on this child here on the shotgun. And I don't like the, f the fact that the fingers are clipped, so I'm just going to move them just a little bit there and move this just a little bit back. Get the handle right in there. And that looks pretty good. And so the trigger should come f back a little, I think. I mean, this way a little. Maybe up a little, yeah, da, 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 da. and looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. No, 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 it's got to come over more. All right, it's a little bit off, um, but you see how much closer it was by doing your global adjustment here and we can take this thing off there now and let's just try one more to see let's the hunting rifle is one of the more extreme cases so let's get the hunting rifle and let's, let's see what that looks like with the new edited default uh, there it is there so i come up to the parent i get my animations populated Droop. i come here and i hold the h key down and scroll the h's and there's hunting rifle hold i hit play and there's the hunting rifle and you can see it's not bad uh, it needs to come up a little. So again, I'm going to make that adjustment on that there, not on my master again. And bring it up and bring it forward. And over. Not bad. May want to pivot it over just a little bit. There's not a lot of standards going on here with TFP weapons. Um, being, you know, polite. But it, 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 they didn't quite standardize them, um, ideally. But it's not bad. And using the player, you, if you're going to do custom weapons, you're going to have to do all this different anyway. So that looks pretty good, mine adjustment. And um, you, know, you got these here. So when you turn this off, it doesn't change them. Because again, when we adjusted this master gun joint, all of these inherited the change and threw them all off, which is why that one we had to do that um, paste the values into it to lock that down. Then it changed all these for the better. And then we make individual adjustments on the particular weapon for the OCD crowd. Otherwise, it's going to be close enough for most people just to leave it that way. Now, when you go to export this character, you want to, you do not want to delete all of these. You want to delete this stuff here, the actual big meshy heavy stuff. You delete all these out uh, after you're done aligning them all. Uh, you got to have to do the, um, the right, um, the, all the pistols in the right hand and the bows and two-handed weapons in the left hand. You make when you're all those you got all those adjustments. You you go ahead and you would then just you know delete that off. Hit the delete key. You'll get the same message. You go in and you can see you can actually start deleting. You know, all of these particular ones out. You know, like that. And then then you do your um, you'll save it and then you do your export. And the character will be a lot lighter for not having, um, you know, two, three hundred um, megs worth of meshes in there. Uh, that's pretty much it. The rest of the export process, everything is the same. I uh, hope uh, you make some entities uh, and contribute to the creature pack uh, this year in A20. And uh, uh, I look forward to your questions. I'm available on Guppy's Discord uh, most of the time. Have a great day.